fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains fought crime and criminals throughout the early western United States. No one could match his courage, his strength, or the quickness of his draw. But it was his resourcefulness and daring that made him the greatest champion of justice the frontier ever knew. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on! Young men, concealed from the main buildings of the Circle K Ranch by a deserted bunkhouse, fought toe to toe. Desperation and bitter hatred could be seen in their faces. Each was badly marked. Each was close to the borderline of exhaustion, but neither would quit. Finally, the younger of the two, thrown off his balance by a blow that missed its target, clutched at his opponent and both went tumbling to the ground. A quick move in the holster of the younger was empty. The elder, on one knee, aimed at the boy with his own weapon. My gun! You grabbed my gun! I'm... I'm going to finish. Um, no, Mort. You fool! I've hated you. I've hated you for as long as I can remember. You've always stood in my way. Now it's your finish. You're finished, blast you. Murder and skunk. Take oh, my hand! Who did Still, that? Take out that gun before I grabs it again. Close it. Oh, who's oh, out? Oh. Mace! Rescue. Mort isn't hurt. Watch out for him. You dirty... Hold your feet, Mort. Oh, let me go. You should be horsewhipped. <laughs> Where'd you fellas come from? Otto and I watched the whole thing from behind those trees. As long as it remained a fair fight, we didn't intend to interfere. But when Mort tried to turn it into murder, it was time to take a hand. Uh, he'd have killed me, all right. He'd always wanted to. And someday I will. Someday I'll fix her for good. Then it'll be by sneaking up behind my back. Hey, you... Hold still. Let go, I tell you. Let go. Get my hands on him. You'll do I, nothing. You watch out. Hickens, Paul, and Ma. What's going on back here? Bill, Ma, you've been fighting again. Come on, Tonto. Get him on the ground. Come on, Silver. Come on. Hey, wait. Who are them fellas? Crooks. What are they doing here? Ma, they took they Bill's side when he tried to shoot me. What? Look there on the ground. I reckon you know Bill's gun when you see it. He was going to drill me. That's a doggone lie. You grab my shield. Quiet. Oh, my, you two poor boys are a sight. Let me get some more water. Sarah, that can wait. But these There's poor something boys... more important to settle first. Bill, I reckon this just about finishes things. Oh, but don't God. interrupt when I'm talking. I had hopes you'd straighten up. Try to be big enough to forget being jealous of Mort. Well, you've proved you won't. Because you are my real son and Mort's just adopted, you've counted on 
Own your maw and me to back you up when you pick fights with them. We tried never to favor one over the other. You wouldn't have it that way. You've acted like you wanted to drive Mort clean off the place. That ain't so. So I... from now on, you ain't no son of mine at all. You can pack up and get. Dad, no. You don't know what you're saying. Don't meddle, Sarah. I never picked a fight. It was Mort. I was never jealous of him a day in my life. It was always him that's been jealous of me. I've been scared that because he's adopted, he won't get his full share of the rain. Silence. I won't keep still. Mort's scheming to done this. I've never liked him, but I've never been afraid to say so, neither. But Mort, he's hung around you and Ma all mealy mouths, telling you all the time how he'd like to be friends with me, and all the time hating me worse than a rattler. Now, you he... know that ain't true, Bill. Shucks, I never had nothing again you. There's nothing I'd rather have done than been friends. Friends? But... Well, well, before they got here, you was telling me how you'd always hated me. Friends, when you jumped me back here without warning, would have drilled me if the masked man had... Bill! Well... Is that your gun? Yeah, Paul. You but... was wearing it? Now, wait a Just minute. Just answer me. I don't want no alibis. Sure, I was wearing it. Then that settles it. Get your duds and go. Very well. Dad, it, it's Bill you're saying this to. It's our boy. Judge, you can't. Come on, do... Sarah. Oh. There's nothing more needs to be said. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got your way at last. You made the scheme and work. <laughs> You heard what your paw said. Pack and git. I'm going. I'm going so far I'll never hear the Circle K again. <laughs> but the country ain't so big that maybe someday our trails won't cross. And when they do, Mort, watch out. <laughs> Graves packed the few necessities he chose to take with him, saddled his favorite horse, and set out on the trail. He had traveled only a few miles, however, when... Hello, Bill! What? Oh, it's a masked man again. Oh, boy. Whoa, whoa. Santo. Oh. What are you feeling? When we rode away, Bill, we didn't ride out of view, and it was pretty obvious what was happening. Your father blamed you for that fight, didn't he? <laughs> it ain't the half of it. He told me to get out beside. Yes. So... Well, I'm getting. I see. Where do you plan to go? I don't know. Don't matter much. Up north, maybe. Wyoming. Somewhere's up that way. Don't be a fool. Huh? Don't go where your parents can't get in touch with you again. Oh, I figured to write more occasional, but, you know, Paul's done with me. I reckon he won't care much where I go. Bill, I think I understand the situation better than you do. You see, Tonto and I have been in this section for some time. We've heard the talk. Well, there's been talk enough. Yes, but the people hereabouts are on your side. Not many of them have much use for Mort. They've had him sized up for quite a while. Funny Paul couldn't see what was plain to everybody else, then. It's natural that he wouldn't. Mort always took care to be on his good behavior in the presence of your folks. Don't make the mistake of condemning your father for his mistake. But he never did care for me. It was always Mort he listened to whenever we had an argument. It was always Mort's side of the story he believed. Anything I said, he just passed over. Which had proved to you before anything else that your father thought more of you. Hmm? Well, how do you figure that? Your father's an honest man. He has the reputation of being as impartially fair in all his dealings as it's possible to be. Well, then why did oh, wait. he... Wait. Your father must have been aware that because you were his real son and Mort adopted, he'd be tempted to favor you. He never has. I know. Because in his effort to be fair to Mort, he went too far the other way. And didn't realize it. Huh? He treated you just as a judge might. If his own son appeared before him as a party in a lawsuit. If he were honorable, the judge would be especially severe with his son. Just to prove he wasn't playing favorites. You mean to say that... I he... mean that you should stay in the district. Sooner or later, your father will learn the truth about Mort. And when he does, he'll need you. Gosh, I... I never thought of it quite like that before. Then it's time you did. Seems funny... You, a masked man, lecturing me like this. Forget my mask. Will you take my advice? Stranger, I will because this is the straightest talk I've heard in quite some spell. Good. But I'd have done it anyhow. Back there by the bunkhouse, when you shot the gun out of Mort's hand, you... You're just the same as saved my life. Now where do you plan to go? To the Cross J, down, down the trailer piece, and get me a job. When Mort finds I'm still around, he ain't gonna like it. And that'll suit me just fine. Adios. Ah, adios. Get up. Get up there. Come on, get up. Uh, 
Him good fella. And he'll get just as tunnel before we leave this district. Uh, Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scott. Oh, Silver, away! On the evening of the following day, just outside the Circle K Ranch House, it looks like they're just about finished. Stand back, you fool. You want them to see you through the window? Mm, they can't see out easy. Just the same, I don't want Judd to guess I was crying. Uh-huh. I think Judd's calling the sheriff. He's making motions like it. I don't know what he... likely means they've got to have witnesses. Rizos, get over by the porch. You're going to be one of them, and you're going to find out what's in that will. <laughs> You, Mort? Yeah. Did you find out what I sent? <laughs> I seen the whole thing. If Judd dies, the whole shebang is hers to use, but she's got to keep it in trust for you. Then after her, the outfit's yours. Bill won't mention? Cut off clean. Yeah. If Judd dies... <laughs> Come on, Brazos. We're going where we can't be heard. Next morning. Ah. Ah, that was a mighty fine breakfast, Sarah. Does a man good to start off the day with some solid grub under his belt? Where's Morty up yet? Morty up yet, Sarah? Sarah? Well? Did you hear me? I asked you. I heard you. What's up with that kid? I'm watching. Well, if you heard me, why didn't you answer? I reckon you know how I feel. Oh, now, look, honey, Did more... Did you figure you could get that lawyer fella out here last night and me not know why? Judd, you changed your will. Don't try to tell me different. I did? You left Bill out of it. I did. You fixed it so's everything would go to Mort. I did. I did, I did, I did. You're talking just like a parrot. Jed, how can you stand there and admit you've done such a thing to your own son and never have the grace to blush for it? We won't discuss no, it. No, you won't discuss it because you know full well you're in the wrong. Ah. Uh, oh, Jed. Jed, you're as blind as a newborn calf. You're just like me. You, you think as much of Bill as I do, only... Only you've made up your mind to be stubborn and you won't change it. Yeah. So you're going to carry on like this, or... I'll have to tell you never to mention Bill's name in this house. When Mort gets up, tell him I want him just as soon as he's had his breakfast. Jed, wait. Oh, Jed. Jed, you don't know what you're doing. Oh. Morning. That judge just went out? He was. Sit down and eat. Your face all laid out for you. When you finish, Jed wants you. Yeah? What for? To help him fix the windmill, I suppose. You heard him say last night there was some work to be done on it. Oh, yeah. I forgot. Want coffee? Mm-hmm. Hold out your cup. Sure. That'll be enough, thanks. I... Well, what's up? Well, I don't know. The men are all running for the windmill. I, I can't see. It's Jed. Something's happened to Jed. Oh, what's the Dad! Dad! He's just laying there. He's mighty bad hurt. I let him through. He's never back. Too close, too close. Somebody do something. What happened? What happened? Well, Ma'am, I, I don't readily know. I, Dusty there seen it. Jed was near the top of the windmill, and all of a sudden he fell. One of the rungs must have let loose. No! Oh, oh Jed! Jed! The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. 